Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 2 of the Outer Planet series, and today we're heading back to Sarnus, but we are going to do more landing today, because last time we just kind of, you know, messed around around Slate and flew around a few of the moons, but now we're going to land on uh, a moon called Tecto, which is an atmospheric moon, and then we're going to dive something into the atmosphere of Sarnus, so it should be lots of fun, lots of burning, lots of landing and looking at the rather nice looking Tecto. Anyway, this is my um, rather bad looking... Uh, well, it's not really a Atlas V this time, but I guess kind of. I just like the KW parts, they all look quite nice. Um, and I have cut down on the fairing mass by uh, making the um, top stage out of the fairing, because it's just, well, it's the nuclear stage for going to the planet, but yeah. Anyway, four times time accelerate, you can see how much trouble I was having flying this. It was uh, rather shaky, um, because SAS and KSP is really not very nice. Um, I should probably get Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. Or actually, it's probably the fact that the I haven't put a probe on the launch vehicle. I'm using the probe in the um, in the probe I'm sending in in the payload, and the probe in the payload's obviously going to wobble because it's on a rocket. So what you really should do is just put a big probe on the pail on the uh, rocket to guide the rocket without having to worry about the payload. But I didn't think of that at this point. So anyway, let's just push ourselves most of the way into orbit with this um, first stage because I just like to build really big rockets because KSP is. Yeah, it's a nice small planet. It makes it kind of nice and easy to get most of the way into orbit, or all the way into orbit with a single stage. Um, you can make a pretty effective single stage to orbit with just one liquid fuel, well, a couple of liquid fuel tanks. Uh, well, no li liquid fuel, fuel and oxidizer, um, because rocket, <laughs> because rockets are really efficient on this. Although they have been used a bit, I'll actually have to see if that's still true. But anyway, anyway, we still have quite a lot of fuel in this top stage, so we should be able to use that mostly to go to. Um, Sarnus, and you can see the payload now. It's quite a uh, quite impressive. Well, actually, no, it's quite small. There's a lander and an atmospheric descender in there. Anyway, I have just cut ahead for the um, well for the purpose of keeping this relatively short. Um, so yeah, this is just our main burn out to uh, Sarnus. I have uh, brightened it a little bit just so you can kind of see what's going on because it's all dark on my screen. So I can't imagine what it will look like on YouTube. Well, actually, I can imagine it'll probably be very dark. Um, so yeah, and I'll just finish off this burn with the nuclear stage, which I would like a little fuel left over in because, well, it would be nice to, well, I need to do some maneuvers around um, Sarnus. But yeah, you can see I've set up another maneuver just to uh, bring myself in. There is a lot of maneuvers in this episode, a lot of them um, getting to the planet and a lot of them around the planet because I wasn't very good because this was recorded in a live stream in which I was quite tired, but we'll get on to that later. Anyway, that's our first correction and our second correction will actually bring us very close to the planet, which is rather nice. I did this in two steps just for a little bit more efficiency and simplicity more than anything else, really. So yeah, we'll just um, complete this burn and... Uh, yeah, go and go and see some of the planets. Um, hopefully, next episode I'll be putting Kerbals on, um, um, on maybe well, on one of the moons or something, and eventually, hopefully, a big old base, some crazy infrastructure going on. I'm not really sure. It's not too modded, as I've said, so it shouldn't be a problem. Just kind of keeping it working, because really heavily modded series kind of do break down quite easily. But anyway, let's head on to Sarnus. And you can see, oh, well, actually, you know, I need to completely finish off this burn because, well, um, this kind of stuff is very sensitive to the initial conditions. Uh, it's one of those outcomes that is pretty much, uh, if you have, like, a tiny change in your velocity, you're going to hit the planet. So that is uh, one of the dangers of space travel. Anyway, I've just left it there, uh, and I'm going to actually, I'm actually going to sort it out when I get to Sarnus. And talking of which, here we are. Um, very cutting ahead because I didn't want to spend ages drifting through space because we saw that all last episode and we've seen it all a lot and we just kind of want to see uh, Tecto because it is very beautiful. Um, beautiful in a weird way. Anyway, this is my uh, fir my first of many corrections and this will hopefully bring us out into the rings. Um, I think I don't actually fly through the rings again and a car starting outside. I'll just close my window. Um, yeah, I don't think I do fl fl fly through the rings, but I have flown through them, and it will be in an episode. It's very unimpressive. It's less impressive than just seeing them from below. I do like the rings, but obviously they're just 2D things, so they kind of just phase out, and then you don't really see anything. Um, they're not like model, there's loads of little particles. I don't think uh, KSP could handle that. Anyway, let's uh, slow down, get ourselves in a nice, highly elliptical orbit around, um, uh, around Sarnus, because... Well, we don't. Well, we want to go to Tecto, so there's no point putting ourselves in a close circular orbit. That would just be illogical. 
Um, and then, well, I guess just, uh, and then we'll have to do some plane, tra plane changes and things. And I also need to leave, uh, well, uh, because the nuclear stage has got to do most of the maneuvers. So I've got to somehow put the top thing, uh, well, I've got to put the top stage on a course to Tecto, and then um, the bottom one just drop it into the atmosphere. So yeah, um, I don't do this particularly efficiently, you'll see. All of that in a little bit. But yeah, you can see uh, the outermost planet is very far away from Sarnus, uh, the green one. And then there's Slate there, um, the one I've already got a probe around. And Elu is a third moon in, and then there's one just outside the rings, and a very small one inside the rings, which you can go and land on, so you can be inside the rings. So I'm sure, well, I will send something there. It would be nice, maybe a Kerbal. Just a little, uh, little lander or something. Although, you could probably, well, you could definitely, it's basically an asteroid, so you can just land on it with your RCS pack, so there's not really any point bringing a lander other than for guidance, because it's quite nice to have a guidance computer rather than flying blind, which I've done many a time. It is quite fun trying to uh, do maneuvers with a Kerbal. Anyway, I've uh, this is my first, um, well, this is my plane change, this is my proper fixture, trying to put myself in the same plane as um, Tecto. I'm still carrying both payloads at this point. Um, ooh, walk past the node a little bit. Well, it'll be fine. Just hunches and guesses. That's how you should do space. Just kind of, just just burn stuff, and you'll probably someone will go right. And you'll notice right now I'm very deep inside Sarnus at this point. I'm gonna drop in and burn up, which was something I didn't really think about while planning that. I was just like, ah, that looks right. And then I realized, oh yeah, I've got to do some sort of prograde burn. So <laughs> that's what this is. Um, well, actually no, this is a radial burn. Um, because, well, that would be more effective at dodging a planet that I'm heading at in this manner. So, yeah, I'm burning uh, pretty much radially to move myself out of the uh, out of the atmosphere of Sarnus because that was a very stupid oversight of mine. Um, that's why there's an extra maneuver. A very large maneuver as well. Wastes a lot of fuel, but it's fine because I have a lot of fuel because I have a nuclear stage, and that's all the fuel you'll ever need. Um, actually, well, probably not. Depends where you're going, but... It's done pretty well, but I had a really big rocket, so maybe at some point I'll try a really efficient method of getting here. But for now, just big rockets and nuclear stages. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're pretty much out of the atmosphere now and just got to finish it off and then uh, figure out how I'm going to get to Tecto. And uh, we'll do that with another prograde burn to put myself at the same altitude where my apple apps will be up near Tecto, basically. Um, so yeah, another burn which probably could have been avoided. Uh, very foolishly of me, but uh, yeah, that looks that looks good. And then just I'll have to do a subsequent burn at my Apple apps just to uh, not well slow myself down relative to Tecto, so it's easier to get an encounter. But anyway, I've got to leave this behind because uh, the probe, well, the lander needs to do its own thing, and this needs to fall into Sarnus, the uh, atmospheric descent module, which is just a little thing I had under the lander. But the lander has its own course to make now, and it has a lot of fuel. And it doesn't need it to land because uh, it's an uh, atmospheric body, very thick atmosphere, I think. And then we'll um, just put down the, uh, uh, use the parachute to land, obviously. Um, this is carrying its single RTG because that's all you really need. Um, obviously on a manned spacecraft or something that has to maneuver a lot, you might want more. But oh, look how beautiful Sarnus looks there. Just rather, rather nice. Just in the, uh, in the background. But yeah, quite a hefty burn here, but this has a lot of fuel because, well, it has a lot of fuel relative to its mass because I knew I'd have to do some sort of relatively heavy burn. Um, but yeah, you can see I've got my encounter, and then it's just a matter of slowing down. I'm not going to risk aero braking because I don't have a heat shield, and um, aero braking's <laughs> quite dangerous when you um, when you when you uh, don't have a heat shield and when there's actual heating. It didn't used to be a problem, but anyway, I've got a pretty good uh, pretty good orbit, well, pretty good path there. Um, but anyway, I've just skipped ahead to uh, watch this descend. I never had to use this one's engines, which was, uh, well, pretty much well, pretty lucky. Um, but yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. And this also has, I think it has a couple of RTGs. I wanted it to be balanced. It also has some uh, some thermometers and things, but I don't think I get a chance to use them because I'm hitting this atmosphere very hard and very steeply because of a lack of planning. There we go, instant heat. Um, the mech jeb unit's already pretty much burned off. The ablative heat shield isn't ablating, it's just overheating. Uh, well, it is ablating, but... Oh, it is ablating very fast. Well, it started heating before it had finished ablating, is what I kind of meant to say. And then once the heat shield's gone, I think that might have actually gone before it ablated. But yeah, we still have the heat shield. Oh, cool. Um, wait, do we have the heat shield? I don't know, we've got some bits there. 
and no no instruments. So that was probably uh, a failure on my part. But anyway, now for the main bit of the video, we are going to land on Tecto. It is rather beautiful, if I uh, if I say so myself. I didn't make Tecto, so that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, yeah, um, just gonna slow ourselves down about uh, around this big green big green thing of something, I don't know, big green mass of stuff, and it's nice purple oceans, or, um, I think they're purple for me, actually they look just kind of green, oh, well it's nice green oceans, I guess, it's kind of hard to tell, I guess that might be atmospheric distortion, though, so, well, we'll tell when we get down there, um, it'll be pretty, pretty dark, because we're very far from the sun, and it, I believe it has a pretty thick atmosphere, so, uh, yeah, anyway, nice circular orbit, still got a lot of fuel, just in case I need to, um, well, make some sort of, uh, uh, freaking make some sort of, um, the correction, uh, no, like, uh, slowing down on landing is what I was thinking of, uh, some correction on landing, I guess, I guess that would make sense, but anyway, I would like to land on land, because I did bring, bring landing legs, so, um, yeah, it would seem appropriate to land on land, there's also some really nice things I want to visit, there's some interesting looking bits, they look kind of red, if you can kind of see that on the surface, slightly red or browner, I kind of want to see that, I want to see what that is, it's probably just mud, um, or, well, tecto-based mud, but it would be interesting to see what that is, I will probably explore this uh, um, with Kerbals, uh, maybe bring, well, it looks a bit, well, it's very low gravity is the thing, and, um, well, actually it might be a bit, a bit like our moon, um, it, I mean, our orbital velocity is like that, I mean, I, I'll check the gravity, the gravity meter, the gravioli detector, I guess. Um, but I think it's it's fairly similar to our moon, but um, it looks like quite rough terrain. I could try a rover. I have totally forgotten the amount of gravity that it has on here, but it has a very thick atmosphere, uh, much thicker than Kerbin's, um, as we will find out. But yeah, I, I've totally forgotten its uh, atmosphere. Yeah, oh, what was that? Damn, I wanted to see that. Well, it, I think that's a 1.41 meters to the second of minus two. Um, which should indicate that um, it's roughly similar to the moon. That sounds roughly not the same as the moon, but uh, quite similar. So uh, it should be possible to use a rover. Um, it should bring something quite heavy, I guess, and quite grounded. And you can see, um, if you did catch that little bit of um, atmospheric meterage, we're already about 0 0.2 atmospheres in uh, at about 70 kilometers. It has a much higher atmosphere than Kerbin. Um, even though it's about the size of our of our moon, from my uh, estimations, obviously I'm, uh, you know, still exploring this whole place. But um, but yeah, so it's pretty impressive atmosphere, and it does make landing quite easy. Although taking off may be relatively hard. Well, not hard to take off. Just got to be careful with your speed. And I have brought many a scientific experiment. Um, but I was mostly interested in bringing those detectors because those can tell me quite a lot about the planet. And I know I can just look that up online or on the information thing on the planet, but that's no fun. Um, I, I like bringing those um, those detectors so I can really find things out about this planet. Um, and I imagine it'll be quite cold, but I, get, I think I do properly look at all this when we get down to the planet. And it was a very slow descent. And you can see I'm already slowed down a huge amount um, because the atmosphere is just so darn thick. Uh, but yeah, we'll just... Uh, slowly descend, plummeting through the atmosphere, and it's uh, thick enough to slow us down so that we won't burn up, although I imagine if you hit this much harder it would probably uh, cause some pretty serious heating. But yeah, you can see these um, oceans are a little bit bluer, and this nice green land just looks black in the lack of light, but hopefully if uh, the sun's more directly on us it'll be slightly prettier, I guess, rather than a barren wasteland. Um, looks like there's a crater full of water over there, probably some interesting things I'd like to check out. Um, behind it on our left, but uh, I guess uh, we'll have to probably look at that. But yeah, I think uh, bringing Kerbals here might be quite fun. Um, there's a lot of planets I could go to. Well, a lot of well, there's other planets as well. I would I'd like to not just focus on Sarnus, but uh, the first bits will be focusing on Sarnus because it's quite close to us relative to like the other ones like Neptune and um, Uranus. But I could go to them. I know one of them doesn't have any moons, so I'm not too interested. And it's 100 Kelvin here. Um, what's that gravioli? Did? Oh, that, damn. Um, actually, I think, uh, uh, just looking back at that um, that uh, gravioli detector, actually here, it's about 2.5 meters a second to the minus 2. Um, well, 2.5 uh, 
2.5 meters per second per second acceleration. So I stupidly <laughs> read that um, read that up there as 1.4 and was like, oh, that's the gravity, uh, the acceleration due to gravity. But that was the acceleration due to gravity, like 70 kilometers away. But on the ground, it'll be um, it'll be much much higher, I bet, uh, because well, we'll be much closer to the center of the center of mass. Anyway falling right down onto the ocean now. Oh, and we're right next to the shore, which is quite nice. Um, because uh, that's, well, the shore looks rather rather inviting, although not super inviting. Um, anyway, deploying the parachute now, um, although I probably would survive without the parachute, given the thickness of the atmosphere. I also do love how the uh, Mystery Goo units are much smaller now in 1.0. I know they were, that's been, that's an old change, but it's nice because they used to be stupidly large. And just um, some relatively generic text there. Uh, I think I kind of want to check the atmospheres, but obviously this is post commentary, so I can't check the atmospheric density. But I do know it's incredibly high. I think it's like 40 times that. And oh my god, look at that! You got um, Sarnus there, I believe, slate up above near the sun, and then below I think is Elu, um, all nicely silhouetted in a in the green sky, which is just yeah, that's that's something special, I think. I think a lot of the times you kind of, when you look at the KSP textures, you like look at the floor, you're like, oh, this looks like crap. But it's when you get that kind of view. Um, and I, I think I pointed this out on Minmus. There was this really nice canyon. And Minmus is fairly bland. They haven't textured it crazily, but it is just quite a nice looking planet. Uh, well, planetary body, I guess. Because it's not a planet. It's hardly even a moon. It's just a little piece of nothing. But we are falling pretty slowly now, but we are almost at the ground. I just wanted to leave this in because it was quite serene after all the kind of jump cutting and like insane burns and burning up in the atmosphere. I, it's just sometimes nice to just take in sereneness of KSP and oh, I guess it gives me a little time to talk and just... Oh, I just love that scene. It, I, I do hope this planet's tidally locked. I haven't checked, but um, it would be nice if I just constantly got to look at Sarnus, but obviously that would only give me one side, and then I wouldn't get Sarnus rise, um, although I could like leave somewhere where I have like a Sarnus on the horizon, because that's the nice thing about Lady, you get a jewel rise a lot. Um, anyway, we are down in the water quite safely, and now we can check all the stuff, um, like the mystery goo, oh no, that's the uh, antenna, so we can tell home that we got here safely. The parachute deployed, we landed successfully on the... Uh, well, in the oceans, um, which will flood most of our experiments. And yeah, you can see 121 atmospheres down here. Uh, 2.5 meters per second. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Um, 2.5 meters per second per second. A uh, little bit of seismic activity. Um, and it's pretty cold, 117 Kelvin. So what's that? That's like minus uh, 160 degrees, if my basic maths is right, which you'd hope it is. But yeah, that, it looks pretty good. Very thick atmosphere, um, relatively low gravity, a little higher than the, moon, the moons actually. Um, but yeah, it could be good for rovers. Uh, hard, pretty hard to get off just because um, of the atmospheres and stuff. But well, the atmosphere, the amount of atmospheric pressure, I guess. But yeah, pretty, um, pretty nice, pretty nice planet, pretty nice planetary body, and a really nice shot of the sky. But anyway, enough of me just telling you how goddamn nice this game is. Uh, it's uh, time for me at the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you will come back for the next episode where we will be putting Kerbals on Tecto. But until then, this has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time. <laughs>